Welcome to the Store of Stack Up, the first episode of the 2015 season. I'm your host, Carrick Sagmiller. A lot has transpired in the first couple of weeks of the athletic season, so let's waste no time. Let's jump right into it. We start with volleyball. The Red Storm Spikers, 3-5 and five so far overall, have participated in two different tournaments, one in California, one in Washington. We start with the one in California. The Red Storm traveled to Los Angeles, California to participate in the Cal State LA Invitational. And in game number one, on Friday, September 4th, they took on the host, Cal State LA. And the Red Storm in that game falling in straight sets 3-0. to zero. The Storm led 14-10 to 10 in set number one, but dropped that lead and Cal State LA came back to take the, to take the match three sets to zero. We'll tell you how they got there. In set number one, the storm dropped at 21-25, set number two, 15-25, and in set number three, 18 to 25, leading the storm in that game in the first game in California. Delaney Daniel had seven kills. Kaylee Fry with 23 assists. Mackenzie Bird had seven kills as well, and Alex Anderson led the storm with 11 digs. The Red Storm weren't done that day. They had one more game on the fourth, and that was a bounce back game for the storm taking on Seattle Pacific down in L.A., and the Red Storm winning that one in, in straight sets, three games to zero. The Storm won 25-21 in set number one, 25-16 in set number two, and 25-22 in set number three. In that game, Brett Anderson led with 11 kills. Lindsey Jones added eight kills, and Kaylee Fry with six kills. Mackenzie Bird Murphy with six kills as well in that game. So at that point, the Red Storm 1-1 one one overall in the season, and they come back the next day on Saturday, September 5th, with two more games to go at the Cal State LA Tournament, and they take on, this time, Malloy College. The Storm picking up their second win of the season on the 5th, winning that one in straight sets, three sets to none against Malloy, 25-16 in the first set, 25-14 in the second set, and 25-19 in the third set. Leading the storm in that game, Brett Anderson with 10 kills, Delaney Daniel with 7 kills, Kaylee Fry with 25 assists. Moving on to the second game of that day for the storm at that point, 2-1 on the season, the first winning record so far at that point. And then they run into Lewis College. Dixie State losing that game three sets to one. In set number one, the storm did win 25-19, but then dropped three straight sets by scores of 25-20, 27, 25, and 25, 23. Uh, lots of Red Storm players to speak of in that game. Delaney Daniel, a double-double. She had 18 kills and 10 digs. Lindsey Jones had 12 kills. Kaylee Fry, as always, leading the Storm in assists with 41 assists. So overall, down in Los Angeles, California, the Red Storm go 2-2. Two and two. They split their games at the Cal State LA Tournament. After that, it was off to Ellensburg, Washington for the Red Storm as they went up for the Central Washington University Tournament in the GNAC PacWest Crossover Tournament, which features the best teams from the GNAC and the PacWest Conferences. Red Storm participated in that tournament last year. They thought they'd do so again this year. Four games for the Red Storm while in Ellensburg, Washington, and they go one and three in those games. We'll tell you how they got to that one and three record. First of all, took it on the Vikings of Western Washington University and dropped that match in straight sets, uh, three to zero, 25-19, 25-14, and 25-22. The Storm in that game led, for, led by seven kills apiece by Lindsey Jones, Delaney Daniel, and Mackenzie Bird Murphy. Kaylee Fry added 24 assists and 13 digs in that game, but ultimately the Red Storm dropped the first set and were unable to dig out of that 1-0 hole and dropped the next two sets, losing three sets to none in that one. Uh, that first game was on Thursday, September 10th. It was the only game they'd play on the Thursday, but last Friday on September 11th, they'd have two games to try and make up for that uh, first loss. And in game number one on Friday, September 11th, they were able to do so. They took on Northwest Nazarene and dropped the first set 25-14. Uh, they did lead 15-11 to and 16-12 to in the first set, but the Northwest Nazarene was able to rattle off consecutive points and win that set 25-14. But that was as close to a victory as Northwest Nazarene would get in that match as the Red Storm rattled off three straight wins in three consecutive sets from there, winning 25-18 in the second, 25-19 in the third, and 25-20 in the fourth set to pick up the victory. Brett Anderson had nine kills. Delaney Daniel had 17 kills and 10, get, 10 digs for a double-double. And Kaylee Fry 
leading the team at 32 assists. The Red Storm with that win moved to 1-1 one and one in Ellensburg, Washington, and were riding a wave of momentum, and they had their next game later that afternoon against the host Central Washington in a game that was close all the way through. Could have gone either way. Uh, Central Washington took the first set 25-18 as well as the second set 26-24. The Red Storm pulled one back in the third set with a 26-24 victory for them, but then ultimately fell in the fourth set 25-22 losing three sets to one to Central Washington and falling to one and two uh, while in Ellensburg, Washington. In that match, three Red Storm players in double, digit, double figures in the kills category. Lindsey Jones had 12 kills, Delaney Daniel with 13, and Mackenzie Bird Murphy with 10 kills for the Storm in what was really a close, hard-fought match, but the Storm falling three sets to one in that game to fall to a one and two record while in Ellensburg. And then wrapping up, the GNAC Pac West crossover tournament in Ellingsburg, Washington on Saturday, September 12th. The Storm with a chance to try and even the record at 2-2 two two while in Ellingsburg. However, the Storm come out and drop a 3-0 uh, contest to Alaska Anchorage, losing in three straight sets. The first set was real close, could have gone either way. So, in fact, the Storm led 21-20 in that first set, but fall 25-21 as Alaska Anchorage rattled off the last five points of the set. In set two, Alaska Anchorage would win 25-18, and then in the third set, they would also win 25-21 for a three sets to none victory over Dixie State in that game. Delaney Daniel led with 10 kills. Mackenzie Bird Murphy added eight kills, and once again, Kaylee Fry leading in assists with 29 assists in that game. So overall, the Red Storm three and five on the season. Volleyball will be back in action this Friday at Cal Baptist University, and then on Saturday, at Point Loma. And now to women's soccer. The women's soccer team with four games under their belt and an even 2-2 split as the Storm started their season with four games in California. The first two wins, the second two losses, and that's how they've got to the 2-2 two two record so far. We'll look over the, some stats and some scores and break down each one of the women's soccer games thus far. The first game against Antelope Valley, the Storm came out and took it to Antelope Valley, winning two goals to zero in that game. Alexis Torres scoring in the 11th minute on an assist from Jasmine Arroyo and Kaisa Rogers scoring in the 61st minute from an assist from Tori Washington. Also in that match, Danica Newsink and Stacey Gubler split the time 45 minutes apiece between goal and Stacey Gubler coming up with three saves to keep the shutout intact for the Storm in that one. Game number two was off to Cal State San Bernardino. The Red Storm boasting a 1-0 record at that point came out and took another victory. 1-0 over Cal State San Bernardino. It was Lizzie Newman in the 41st minute on an assist from Courtney Fryer, who scored the goal that would be the eventual game winner, and the Storm would also win that one 1-0, giving the Red Storm a 2-0 record uh, the, starting the season at 2-0 for the Storm. The Storm would take that 2-0 record up to Northern California, the long drive up to Humboldt State University, and a hard-fought match saw the game go into overtime and then the Red Storm lose in heartbreaking fashion as they concede a goal in the 96th minute, just about five minutes in to the overtime period on a sudden victory format. And once that goal was scored by Humboldt State, the match was over and the Lumberjacks would take that match 1-0. The Red Storm falling to 2-1 and one at that point. And then moving on to the final game, which turned out to be yet another heartbreaking loss for the Red Storm as they took on the Wildcats at Chico State University. That game played in Chico, California. The Wildcats would jump out to a 2-0 lead early in that game, scoring two goals in just a two-minute span in the 19th and the 21st minutes before the Red Storm pulled one back in the 28th minute. Megan Marchbanks got a goal and an assist from Jasmine Arroyo to make the score 2-1. That score would hold up at halftime. The Storm came out and then tied the game in the 72nd minute as Jasmine Arroyo scored the equalizer to make it 2-2. But the Storm could not hold on to that 2-2 tie as Chico State scored in the 85th minute and held on for a 3-2 victory in that match. The Storm again, two wins, two losses overall. Their next game at home against the Real Salt Lake women's semi-pro team on Saturday at 5 o'clock. And now we move to men's soccer. Men's soccer with four games on the schedule, however, only three have been played. The last most recent game on Tuesday, September 12th, was canceled due to weather at Cal Poly Pomona. So let's tell you how they got to their 2-1 record in the first three games of the season. The first two games for the Storm 
were played at home, the, set, the third one on the road. Let's take a look at each of those games and who scored the goals and what the final scores were. The first game, the Storm welcomed in the Roadrunners of Metro State University and Dixie State came out blasting as the Storm won that game 5-2, scoring full four goals in the first half and just one goal in the second half for the total five goals for the 5-2 victory in that game. Let's tell you who scored those goals. First, it was Gabby Medina scoring in the eighth minute on an assist from Alejandro Santiago. Then in the 17th minute, Alex Galvin scored uh, on a free kick from 25 yards out to make it 2-0 Dixie State. Metro State Denver would pull one back to make it 2-1, but the Red Storm were not done in the first half, as in the 34th minute, Jorge Echevarria on a long throw-in from the right side from Brian Baugh recorded his first goal of the season, and then again, Frankie Malik in the 45th minute, just three seconds before the first half would end, Brian Baugh threw another one in from the right side, and Frankie Malik was able to get on the end of that ball and knock it into the back of the net. 4-1 to one was your halftime score in that game. Uh, Metro State Denver got one in the 66th minute to make it 4-2. to two. And then Santiago Alejandro scored one for Dixie State in the 82nd minute, and that was the final score as that held up 5-2 to two for the Red Storm. They would only have a couple of days to think about the victory in their 1-0 record, as on Sunday the Storm hosted the Cougars of Cal State San Marcos in a game where Cal State San Marcos took a 1-0 lead in the 28th minute, and the Red Storm try as they might could not find the equalizer in that one, and the Storm fall 1-0 to zero in that game to follow a 1-1 one one record. Uh, goalkeeper Bradley Trella played all 90 minutes in goal for the Storm, recording, recording one save along the way, but the Storm concede a goal and drop that match 1-0. to zero. Those were the two home matches, and so at, one, at that point, the Red Storm were 1-1 one one overall, and the Red Storm would then take that record out on the road to California to what they thought, again, was supposed to be two games. Game number one played in La Mirada, California against Biola University, an NAIA opponent. The Storm come out and get the first goal of the match in that game in the 39th minute. Jason Arroyo, a beautiful header from a Santiago Alejandro corner kick, and Arroyo able to find the back of the net for the first time in the 2015 season to give the Storm a 1-0 lead, and that lead would hold up. Biola University tried and tried and tried to find the equalizer, but could not do it. Overall, Viola University had 24 shots on the match to just six by Dixie State, but the Red Storm made one of them count when they had to to take the 1-0 victory at Viola University. Of course, again, after that, the Red Storm were supposed to have a game on Tuesday, September 12th at Cal Poly Pomona, but monsoon weather came through. Mother Nature did not agree with the scheduling of that match, and the field was completely soaked in water. The two coaches met, talked it over, and decided to call the game. So at this point, the Red Storm men's soccer team, a 2-1 record. They'll be back on the pitch this Saturday, uh, September 19th, at home against the Real Monarchs. Now, the Real Monarchs are the, the, the lower division Real Salt Lake team as they play in the USL instead of in Major League Soccer. That game is set to kick at 8 p.m. here at Hanson Stadium. With that, we'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk about cross country and football and what those two teams have done so far this season. Don't go anywhere. More Storm Stack Up coming your way after this. The Community Education Channel, serving Washington County for 20 years, covering DSU athletics, local high school events, city councils, the Economic Summit, Chamber of Commerce meetings, community events like Washington City Veterans Day celebration, and much more. Visit cectvutah.com for broadcast schedule and more information. And welcome back to the Storm Stack Up, the first episode of the 2015 season. If you're just tuning in to the first segment, we talked about volleyball, women's soccer, and men's soccer. Now we get to cross country, both men's and women's teams, and the football team. Lots of things to talk about, so again, let's jump right back into it. Cross-country team, only one race to speak about so far, and that was the weekend of September 5th as the cross-country teams headed down to Flagstaff, Arizona to participate in their annual George Kite Invitational, typically the race to start off the season for the Red Storm. They go down there, they compete against a lot of Division I schools in that race, and they have success. The Red Storm go down the women's team earning its first victory in program history in the open division there at the George Kite Invitational. The men's team finish in third. We'll take a look at a couple of runners from each team in that race. 
For the women's team, it was a 2.6-mile race. The, again, the women win it as a team with a time of 125.17, grabbing the top spot in the Open Division. Now, the Open Division meaning uh, competing against everyone but the Division I schools. And so the Red Storm able to grab that victory. Again, the first in program history for any cross-country team. Uh, head coach Justin Decker really pleased about that victory. Uh, individually, junior Skylar Story on the women's side grabs the victory at the George Kite Invitational hosted by Northern Arizona University. The second consecutive victory for Skylar Story at the George Kite Invitational. Skylar Story won the, the race with a time of 15.39.7, shaving 14 seconds off her winning time from last year. Uh, freshman Megan Sidwell finished in second place with a time of 16.54.8, and sophomore Katie Brandon earned a fourth place finish with a 17.23.5. Senior, senior Brianna Moyle finished in seventh place with a 17.38.6, and junior Elizabeth Cook finished in ninth place with a time of 17.39.9. Now, as mentioned before, the men's team also having success to start the season of the 2015 as they earn a third place finish in the Open Division with a total time of 2.10. Uh, the so sophomore Jonas Desta led the way for the men's team, finishing in seventh place at the 4.5 mile race with a time of 24.48.8. Junior Shaquan Nettingham earned a ninth place finish with a time of 25.12.14, while sophomore Brandon Borgett finished in 17th place with a 26.18.2 time there at the George Kite Invitational. Overall, a very successful race for the Red Storm to begin the 2015 season. Their next race will take place on October 3rd at the California Baptist University Invitational. Moving on to football now, two games to speak of so far for the Red Storm as we get you caught up on those games. Football, first hosting Colorado Mesa University on a Saturday game on September 5th. A lot of hype going into that game and the Red Storm unfortunately dropped that first game by a mark of 43-3. That game featured two quarterbacks from the Red Storm. Sophomore uh, Illinois State transfer Trevor Ray got the starting nod in that game. Uh, he passed uh, 13 for 23 for 102 yards, did throw an interception that led to a touchdown at that point. Uh, Blake Barney, the freshman, St. George native, played at Dixie High School here in St. George. He threw 3 of 10 for 19 yards in what turned out to be a 43-3 victory for the Mavericks of Colorado Mesa University. Uh, rushing yards, Blake Barney, 10 rushes for 95 yards. Dejon Coleman at running back had 12 rushes for 68 yards in that game. Moving on to receiving, Nate Stevens had 6 catches for 61 yards, the, the leading receiver for the Storm in that game. On defense, Colton Olson from the safety position led with 9 tackles. Josh Simonette had 7 tackles. Robert Metz at linebacker had six tackles. We take a look at field goals. The only scoring for the Red Storm in that game came in the second quarter as Alex Giordani recorded a 32-yard field goal, split the uprights with that one, and the Red Storm ultimately falling in that game 43-3. Better things were to come for the Storm, though, in Week 2. As a rare Thursday game, Red Storm hosted Central Washington University. The Wildcats making the trip from Colorado. In fact, the reason the game was played on Thursday as Central Washington University opened the season at Colorado State University Pueblo. Didn't want to travel all the way home to Ellensburg, Washington. So the two teams agreed to play the game on Thursday as the Central Washington got into St. George on Wednesday afternoon. The game was played on Thursday. Let's go ahead. We'll take a look at some highlights as we break things down here for the the Red Storm getting the victory 49 to 20. Let's take a look at some highlights from that game and then we'll look over the stats. See here Blake Barney getting the start and this play he would pull it back and then charge forward. Barney not one to shy away from a tackle. Next play hands off to Dejon Coleman. The first Red Storm touchdown of the season as Coleman takes that one in for the touchdown. That would make it 7 to 0 for the Storm. And you see him celebrating there with his teammates. However, Central Washington got one back. His punter, Christian Rodriguez, could not handle the punt there. Punt fumbled into the end zone. Central Washington picks it up, scores a touchdown. The Red Storm wasted no time responding, though. Blake Barney helped march the Storm back down the field. You see this run, the stiff arm there. Blake Barney not shying away from the contact. And that was set up this play. Drops back, fakes the pass, scoots ahead for the score. His first in a Red Storm uniform, I'm sure the first of many and to give the Storm uh, one touchdown cushion. And then Dejon Coleman went back to work a 37-yard touchdown scamper to put the Storm up even more in the first half. Coleman, 125 yards rushing on the game. 
The Wildcats would strike though on this pass from Jake Nilsson to Jesse Zalk. They get down to the one yard line and then a pass to Justin Peterson in the back of the end zone. They got made it 21 13 at the half. But the storm came out firing in the second half to John Coleman, his third of three touchdowns, runs into the end zone there. And then who can forget this game? Brandon Sloss from defensive end comes around, knocks quarterback Jake Nilsson to the ground, and Keanu Foki picks it up and goes the distance. A 68 yard fumble recovery touchdown as he runs all the way to the end zone. A rare touchdown scored by a defensive lineman. And then another fumble later in the second half for Central Washington as things started to unravel. Red Storm recover that one. That's Josh Simonette coming up with the fumble recovery. And you can see the Red Storm players, coaching staff excited. Senior Miles Burton would get on the action. He only had one carry, but that's all he needed. A 25-yard scamper to the end zone. Extended the Red Storm lead in the second half. And then it was freshman quarterback Tyson Blackner. He would get it on things. A big long run for him as well. That was the last Red Storm touchdown, and that made it 49-20. to the Red Storm win that one. Let's take a look and at some statistics from that game. Again, passing. Blake Barney got the start. In fact, the only quarterback to play in that game. 3 of 10 and through the air for 35 yards. But on the ground is where the Red Storm got it done. To John Coleman, we saw his three touchdowns. He rushed it 14 times for 125 yards and those three touchdowns. Blake Barney, 15 rushes for 95 yards and a touchdown. Orlando Wallace, the freshman, 14 rushes for 69 yards. Tyson Blackner. Freshman quarterback, he only got three touches, three runs, but made the most of them. 54 yards, and you saw the long touchdown run there. And then Miles Burton, the senior running back, one rush, 25 yards, and a touchdown. He only needed the one chance to find the end zone. A school record, 404 yards rushing as a team for the Red Storm against Central Washington in the 49-20 victory. On the defensive side of the ball, linebacker Robert Metz had nine tackles to lead the team. Colton Olson from the safety position coming up, having a second straight big game for the Storm. Eight tackles for Col Colton Olson. Chris Campbell, defensive lineman, he had five tackles and a sack. Brandon Sloss, he was the one that forced the fumble. Keanu Foki, defensive lineman, the starter there, had two tackles. He's the one that scooped up the fumble and ran it back to the end zone for the 68-yard touchdown run. So those are the stats for the football team. Again, one and one so far in the season. The Storm traveling the long trip to Arcata, California to take on the Lumberjacks of Humboldt State University on Saturday. That game kicks off at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Mountain time here back in St. George. With that, that'll do it for our show. First, before we let you go, we'll take one last look at what's coming up again. We covered lots of it throughout the show. The only thing you'll see there on your screen, men's and women's golf, both in action on September 18th and 19th. The men get things started at the St. Martin's Invitational, then moving on on the 20th and the 21st to the Western Washington Invitational, then women's golf on Monday, September 21st and Tuesday, the September 22nd, traveling to the Western New Mexico tournament. So men's and women's golf getting things underway. That's it. The first episode of 2015 for the Storm Stack Up in the books. Appreciate you tuning in. Catch us here next time on the Storm Stack Up.